Okay, so you got your box, you got your kits. So take everything out gently. Um, the sheep brain comes in a package like this. So just gently use your scissor to go around to cut it out. Don't, don't injure the actual tissue of the brain because it's very sensitive. So let me just give you a little better view. And I set this up um, with the apron on the bottom of my table so I don't mess up the table. I put the sponge pad, which is this, on top of the dissection because this is just a styrofoam, something they give you in a butcher shop, which I shouldn't say butcher, but that's what I use. And I'm gonna throw all this out after, except for the apron, save the apron, save the tools. I got some toothpicks too, that you might wanna use to point things out. I added that. You should have some alcohol to clean up later. Always wear gloves and you should wear protective eyewear. Not so bad for the sheep brain, but the chemicals are strong. They could burn your, your corneas a slight bit, the membranes of your corneas. So especially if you get too close. You could wear a mask if that helps you too, your PPE that you have around from the virus. And uh, be really careful with the scalpels. The good news is these are probably really sharp. So keep it covered when you're not using it. You have your scissors, which we're not gonna use too much for this dissection. But the scalpel, it's, it's really only one cut for the scalpel. So once you get the brain out, look at the external anatomy. Again, from what you know about the brain, you know that the cerebellum is posterior, right? When you're looking at the superficial, superior view. So we're looking at the top of the brain and down here would be your brain stem, right? In here. So the spinal cord would be exiting down here. So the sheep is a, a quadruped. So his brain is like this with dorsal side and then ventral side on the bottom. Human brain more vertical, right? So the spinal cord will start off here. So the first thing I think you should notice is the cerebellum posterior dorsal. And then you can see the two cerebral hemispheres Guys, just speak out if you can't see something, you need to be moved, because I really can't see the um, screen so good. So you could see the right and left cerebral hemispheres, the cerebrum, which is the largest part of the brain. And you could see the longitudinal fissure. Now, in some dissections, you'll have the dura matter and the arachnoid matter are, are together. So that is not on this brain. So that would be a packaging around it. So we don't have that tough mother of a fibrous connective tissue. All we have is the pia matter, which is right on top of the brain. You might be able to pinch some of that off if you go in there. It's the yeah, pia matter, right? Can I? If you what? Have you have a question? Sorry, no, yeah, I didn't yeah. know I was on mute. <laughs> Could you mute that? Thanks. Yep. Thank you. So now in the middle, you have the longitudinal fissure, which you don't have to cut anything to separate the longitudinal fissure. So you can do that with your fingers. Sorry, I can't really see what I'm doing. I don't want to destroy the tissue. So you could separate that gently and you could feel, if you press in here, you could feel the corpus callosum, which is the commissural white matter between the two hemispheres. So you could feel that and you could, pretty much open it up to the frontal lobe and break apart that pia matter that really holds them together at that point. So now you can see the frontal lobes, like this is the right frontal lobe, left. Parietal would be back here, right parietal, left parietal. And this sulcus in here, you'd be able to see a central sulcus between the frontal and parietal, right side. And of course, you could notice the gyrus, the hills. You could see where the sulci are, the valleys. And you could see the posterior fissure here, which separates the cerebellum from the cerebrum. And if you look close, I'm turning this around, posterior. If you look in here, you could see the posterior midbrain. And this is the corpora quadrigemina. So you have a left 
and right superior colliculus or colliculi is plural. And then you have the inferior colliculus, the colliculi plural. So what I did was just opened up the back of the brain and show it this way. On the ventral side, you turn everything over. This has to be dissected a little bit, but you could see basically these bulbs up here on top. These are your olfactory bulbs. Look at that separation. And then you have olfactory nerve behind it, which you really can't see too well on this particular model. Model, this is a real brain, this is a sheep brain. Temporal lobe on the side is not as pronounced as in the human brain. So it's a little shorter. So anything pointing in here is gonna be temporal lobe. Okay. And back here, you have your brain stem right below going down towards the spinal cord. And when we do the mid-sagittal cut, you can see more. Now, if you look up here, it's kind of hard to see. I'll put it as close as I can. But this is the optic chiasm right here. And you kind of have to pull that out. And notice the difference in the tissue. Like the chiasm is white matter tracks. You know, these are bundles of neur neurons myelinated. So it's a little thicker. It's not connective tissue, it's parenchyma. It is neurons coming from the retina, right? And it's crossing over this decusation. It's called the optic chiasm. So the anterior part of the op optic chiasm is the optic nerve going to the retina, which you'll see in the, in the cow eye, actually, that this nerve comes from the retina and is part of the back of the eyeball on both sides. Now the posterior part of the chiasm is really a track. So that's the optic track right there. Okay, I don't think you're gonna see a pituitary gland on this particular brain. So again, take a look at all that and feel it with your hands. Like see if you can see, be gentle, but see if you can see the corpus callosum down the middle there. And now you're gonna make a cut straight as you can. I mean, sometimes it helps to put a, you could put a toothpick or something to hold it in there. But again, this bottom piece is styrofoam. So you wanna cut as straight down the middle as you can, gently cut the corpus callosum through the cerebellum and cut down the center of the midbrain almost all the way or all the way to the spinal cord. And now you can see the mid-sagittal section here. So now you can see a bit of the pons here. This is the medulla oblongata here. Here's your fourth ventricle right here. This is the midbrain. Remember the back of the midbrain is the superior and inferior colliculus. And then right here, you can see it. I don't know if you can see it with your cameras as good as you can see it at home, but you can see the difference in tissue. Right now I'm pointing to the corpus callosum. And then this area in here would be your lateral ventricle. And just down in this area would be your thalamus. Hypothalamus will be here. You really can't see the pituitary stalk or the pituitary gland here. Okay, you can still see the sulci and the gyrus. Um, this area right here would be your cerebral aqueduct coming from the third ventricle, which is just adjacent to the thalamus. And the hypothalamus, I really don't see it so well, but anterior would be your mammillary bodies. Frontal lobe 
here. So feel the tissue, look at the different texture of the tissue. These brains are very small, so it's not that easy to see everything, but you really have to take a closer look. And I think the book suggests, or the Carolina Biological suggests you take, um, take pictures as you do this, because you're gonna throw this away. I mean, you, you can hold on to this, you could package it away, keep it air tight, and you could use it later, but I don't think you really wanna do that, but you can if you want. So right here again, corpus callosum. This would be your cingulate gyrus right up here. This would be occipital lobe. And if you really look close, you should be able to see the white matter in the cerebellum called the orbit vitae. If you really look close there. And a little bit of the central canal starting down here, going to the spinal cord. So the cerebrospinal fluid starts in the lateral ventricle and it goes down in the, this area between these two thalamus or the third ventricle. Then you have the cerebral aqueduct leading to the fourth ventricle and then starts the uh, central canal, which you really can't see on this brain stem, but you could see it down here going into the spinal cord. So the main parts of the brain, again, just to keep it simple, is all of this up here is cerebral. All of this in here is diencephalon. Then starts your brainstem. Brainstem from midbrain to pons to the medulla oblongata. And then here's your cerebellum. And you can see the cerebellum also has folia, which instead of calling it gyrus, call it folia. <laughs> And there's a centerpiece too, which I didn't show you before, but it's called the vermis. Okay. So the three parts, you really can't see too much. I can't really make out a pineal gland on this particular dissection, but that would be all the epithalamus in here. Let's see if we can see that in here. Because they have a pretty big pineal gland as compared to us, the um, the sheep. I really can't make it out so well on this particular model. But we could put a picture on. Um, so look at the videos where you have larger sheep brains, and um, sometimes you could see a pineal gland. Sometimes you could even see the um, pituitary gland if it hasn't been cut. But for the most part, we covered pretty much all the different parts of the brain from the mid sagittal section. And you can see how it comes together. And again, get your bearings on what's frontal, what's occipital, cere uh, cerebellar, deep into the midbrain back here, corpora quadrigemina. And then know your anterior structures. Here you can see, try to match up where the pons is right here in the medulla oblongata, optic chiasm up here, which is just below the hypothalamus. In fact, most of the nuclei of the hypothalamus are right above here. So those hormones are secreted from into the posterior pituitary, just above the optic chiasm. And don't forget the olfactory, which is really important in the sheep the olfactory bulbs, which lie in the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. Posterior is your opti I'm sorry, olfactory tracts going back. So tracts, as you know, are myelinated fibers projecting, in this case, of course, to the temporal lobe, right? Because that's where we associate smell. Optic nerve, those nerve tracts will be going to the occipital lobe where we associate vision, right? Sometimes you could see some cranial nerves, but they're really hard to see. I would have to spend some time, you would have to spend some time dissecting this tissue very carefully to see if you could see. Sometimes the trochlear nerve will pop out over here, abducens actually. But this is the abducens nerve, which is a really boring cranial nerve that controls one eye muscle. So you're learning the eye muscles now, you're learning the eye structures now. And again, for our practical, the um, eye structure is very rudimentary. 
view of all the special senses. So, but you should be able to follow it back to the nuclei. And most of that is in the brainstem, except for olfaction, which is up here, starts in the frontal lobe, goes to the temporal lobe. And your vision, optic tract goes to occipital. But most of your cranial nerves are all brainstem oriented between the pons and the medulla oblongata. So they branch off. Like you might be able to see cranial nerve five if you, if you actually dissect it out. But again, that would take a really long time. You have to be really careful. Okay, so again, get a nice sagittal section if you haven't done that already, mid-sagittal. And this is pretty good too. This side's pretty much down the middle. It's only that one cut that you have to do. Just be gentle. You don't destroy any of the tissue. And if you have time, if you're interested, you could do a coronal section through the front. Maybe you could see not so good here. If you really look close, you might be able to see some outer lying gray matter, which would be cerebral cortex and the white matter. It depends on the preservation and the health of the, the sheep. How this looks like a very young sheep. So it's not so well delineated, mine, mine anyway, but you can have a better sheep. You might be able to see the gray matter. I could just pick it up if the shade is right enough in here. Okay, you could pick up some other things. You can see part of the corpus callosum. This is where the ventricle would be, the lateral ventricle, which is uh, separated by the septum pellucidum, which is gone, basically. You can't really see that. And don't forget to open up the back like this. Okay? How did it work out? Okay, did anybody do it with me? So you guys at home, if you want me to do it with you, let me know. If you're watching the recording, but just be careful. You should be wearing uh, older clothes like this, and so just in case. And it's, I think the smell is one of the worst things. Um, but it, I, I, it's not so bad. Keep a window open. Um, wear a mask if the smell is bothering you, and be careful of the um, splashing. Although the, the the brain of the sheep is not so wet, just when you take it out of the packaging, be really careful, like I did. As you can see, I put this sponge pad over the right section, and then I can just throw everything out because you get a whole separate set for your cow eye. Sorry, I said sheep eye on the um, email, but it's a cow eye. Anybody have any immediate questions? There are other videos that go on. I think there's like an, a long video that shows you nice pictures, like as you're going through. I think in comparison with the human brain, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah, I got a question. Bill Cosby, yes. Yeah, um, like, okay, like, so this will be a part of the last practical we're taking, or this going to be a final? The final practical, yeah. Okay, which is the third practical? Correct. Now, this, so, this so we're supposed to be doing this dissection here, but if you have other questions about exams or anything like that, just email me separately or meet with me separately. Okay. okay. Um, people now, are recording this. Here. Like, um, did you go over the car already or? No, we're gonna do that in a couple of days. Please read your emails. Yeah, I don't get a lot of emails from you. Let me no, get, because like, I want the emails I sent are important and I don't wanna overdo the emails. So yeah, just read the emails. I think I sent one last night or this morning on that. So we'll do the cow eye together again, even though there is a video on uh, Blackboard that you can go through. So anybody have questions about the dissection, about the box, everybody have the kit? I just have a question about the sheep. Um, is there fornix present too in here? I know there's- Yeah, you could see it. Yeah, you could see it if you, if okay. the section. It look, kind of looks like the, the bottom of the corpus callosum. Unfair, I think, for, for the, if I put this particular- Yeah, it's so tiny, it's hard to see. Yeah, yeah. If we had a nice big um, cow brain, sometimes you, it looks really good. Sometimes I've seen good sheep brains where you could see the fornix really good, see the pituitary. So I, I first thing, I, I, I couldn't even find this at first when I first opened this box, it was so small. But that's okay, it has everything else, right? Get a, get a good look. So good luck studying, have fun.